Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me today. Um, Samantha was looking for people a few months ago and I volunteered. So, and you'll kind of hear why about that here in a little bit. Um, I probably will have to sneak over here to change slides, but um, today I wanted to talk to you about um, finding your passion and putting it into your business. And something you might not always think about, um, but I thought it was something that has inspired me. Um, and so that's what I'm doing. So what I'm gonna do is share some stories and share a little bit about my business and how I do that. And then I've got a little uh, participation here too. Um, there's some, under all the rest of the papers, there's some little note papers um, to be used later on. So if you can, I wanna kinda share or start passing those out to each other. And I apologize for coming over here, but let's see here. There we go. So just a little bit about me, um, cause I'm here and I have your attention. Um, <laughs> I am a, a registered nurse. Technically, I'm still a nurse. I still have my license, but I haven't worked in a healthcare setting for a few years now. Um, and I'll kind of talk about what I do with my nursing at this moment. Um, but earlier this year, I became an aromatherapist, and I'm gonna talk about that a little bit too. Um, but if you, I don't know, if it's kind of hard for you guys to see probably, but um, there's a picture there of my husband and I at a Brewers game. Boo-hoo, they, they're out of the playoffs now. But um, <laughs> so I've been married to him for 35 years, yay. Um, he just retired last year, and that's been fun. That's been fine. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, yeah, anyway. Um, it's a transition. It, it really is. And then there's a picture there at my um, daughter Katie's wedding um, two years ago. We were lucky, lucky enough to have twin daughters, and I usually call them girls, but they're 33 years old. I really shouldn't be calling them girls anymore. Um, Katie actually married Alan two years ago, and um, we love him too. He's actually my favorite, and I know that because he gave me a shirt that says so. Um, he's awesome. And then, of course, I have to talk about my animals. I have two dogs. Um, you know, when your kids leave home, you kind of get dogs. I do anyway. I thought that was the rule. Um, so we have Jake on the left. He's a black lab, and then Pepper is our little border collie mix, and they're like yin and yang, total opposite. Um, Jake goes with the flow. He's a library therapy dog, and Pepper's like... You move that chair, don't move that chair. What did you do that for? Um, so that's always fun, but okay. So I, I really wish you could see this slide because it's kind of a visual, I'm very visual, so this is why we're doing slides, but I kind of, I started out, I was a nurse for 27 years, did everything pretty much. Um, and then about six years ago, I was introduced to an essential oils company called doTERRA. And I'd kind of used essential oils in the hospital, not a lot. I kind of, you know, if a patient was nauseated, we'd give them some peppermint to smell, um, you know, calming down lavender, of course. And so I decided I wanted to, when I was introduced to doTERRA, I thought um, the opportunity came to make a little extra money as a, we call it a wellness advocate. So I thought, well, I'll do that. I had done something along those lines like years before that. And so I did my little direct sales side hustle, I call it. And over the course of the next few years, I kind of went back and forth um, between, you know, nursing is up front and the side hustles back here. And then I'd say, oh no, I'm learning all this stuff about business. I want to be a business person. And so the oils would take a bigger role and the nursing was kind of less, you know, more of a part-time. And so I kind of went back and forth. And during, it was about three years ago, um, I was at a business event and the person who uh, was speaking talked about um, taking what you are passionate about and putting it into your business. And a wonderful, awesome, amazing businesswoman, and I'm saying that even though, I would say that even if she wasn't here today, so. Um, <laughs> anyway, so, um, so at that point I was like looking to focus on business. I was kind of like, you know, I, I needed a new, a, new th a new gig. I was in that midlife, I'm still in the midlife. Um, and I wanted something new. And like this guest here today said if you were stuck. And that was kind of a feeling that you get at a certain, I got at a certain point. So anyway, I thought, what do I like to do? And it took me a while to kind of figure out what do I love to do? What gets me out of bed in the morning? Um, what I'm excited about? And I thought about it, and it took a while, like I said. And I love to get in front of people and talk. Huh, good thing I'm here, right? Um, but at that time, at that time, we couldn't really get up get out in front of people because it was 2020. Yeah. So, okay, well, pivot. Um, so what can we do? So my daughter at that time had a podcast 
and she loved it and it was awesome. And I thought, I'm gonna do a podcast. And so I had this person that I worked with, just kind of a business consultant type person, and we had a three month plan. And my plan was to get just one episode ready in that three months. Well, by the end of the three months, I had two episodes. One was already out and one was ready to go. It was just one of those things where I knew this is what I wanted to do. Um, what I do with my podcast is I interview women over 40. It's called Midlife with Courage. And I, we talk about their stories, their personal stories. Like maybe they overcame a challenge. Maybe they, are, you know, they woke up one day and their husband said, I want a divorce. Um, one lady fell out of a plane and her parachute didn't open. 80-year-olds um, who taught themselves to paint. Um, just, just stories. The world is full of these women with beautiful stories and I wanted to share those. So that's what I'm doing with my podcast. And then the oils were there. So I was trying to figure out ways to go to kind of figure out what I'm going to do with those oils. Long story short, I, wanted, I became an aromatherapist so that I could educate people on the safe use of essential oils without the sales pitch. I love doTERRA, I love you know, their company. Um, there's a lot of other great companies out there too, but that wasn't where my heart was and I knew that I wasn't going to be the upper echelon of doTERRA, presidential, double diamond, whatever all those titles are. So, this, so my pivot took me to, this, to where I am this year. I decided becoming an aromatherapist along with my um, nursing background and my passion for educating people it was a perfect fit for me. And that's where I am now, and that's what I'm doing now, and I love it. And it's still kind of transforming and morphing into other things. So, um, well, just a little different path. So, um, so that's kind of where I'm at now with the business. Oh, are you gonna? Yeah, if you could. Yeah, just hit the screen there. There you go. All right. So when we talk about passion, I always love to find the definition of words that we're gonna talk about. So when I looked up passion, um, it's defined as a strong and barely controllable emotion or an intense desire or enthusiasm for something, a thing arousing enthusiasm. So I always, I tell people like, when something, when I'm really excited about something, I clap my hands. I like, I don't want to do this because it'll, you guys will go, ah, stop. Um, but I like literally clap my hands. What makes you do that? Kind of start thinking about that. We're going to do a little exercise here in a little bit. But what gets you out of bed in the morning? What do you spend your time thinking about? Or what, what do you spend your free time doing? And if you have to go farther back, what did you love to do as a kid? Like, what brought you joy? All right, you can just go ahead and change it. There we go. Um, I will never pass up an opportunity to show you a picture of my dog, Jake. Um, <laughs> so I'm just, I talk to a lot of women over, through my podcast, of course, and just women um, in real life and one-on-one. -on -one. And a common theme that we kind of have is we kind of get stuck. We're conditioned to do what we're always, um, what we're always doing. And I thought about this the other day. Um, anyone who has a lab knows that they are very food made motivated. Mm -hmm. And as a puppy, I taught Jake, when, you, when I go in to put the food in the dish, I pick up the dish, the butt sits. His butt sits, not my butt. His butt sits. And so he, as soon as he sits, the food comes down. Well, he's five years old now, and that big old butt goes right down every time I pick up that food dish. And I just thought about that, like, we don't think about what we're doing every day sometimes. We just go through our motions, we get into our rut, and we might get stuck. Um, so it's just kind of, mean, not to say that we're all dogs, but, we're, but we are, we have to kind of think about what are you doing all the time that you are maybe just doing it without thinking about it. So, yeah. And then my, the podcast, again, the, the themes, um, three themes have come out of, I've got, I think we had 100, the 136th episode came out this week. So some themes have come out. Um, first of all, life is short, YOLO, live every moment. And then that second one, being, t being tired of doing what you've always done. That was me where I, you know, I turned the big 5-0 and I'm doing all these things that I'm expected to do. You know, as a kid, I was the oldest, so I had to be responsible for the other three, you know, at times. And you know, I went to school, got married, had the kids, um, became a nurse. And you know, nurses. When I started, it was more the doctor comes in, tells you what to do, and you do it. Um, thankfully, that has changed. Um, but that was kind of the kind of my whole. It kind of felt like when I thought about it, like, I've just been doing what everyone expects me to do, and now I can do something else. I want to do what I want to do. So, um, and then that third one is fill your cup for self-care. So, you can go to the next. So, let's talk about what is your passion? What are you excited about? And you can go to the next slide. It's just a really quick one there. 
Yeah, so let's find out. So if you can grab that piece of paper, if you have your own little paper um, to use, you can go to the next slide, please. Thank you. There you go. So if you could do or have anything, what would it be? And just don't think about it, just write it, whatever comes into your mind. And I wanted to give you like two minutes if we had time for that. Um, so just start writing. And I gave you some inspiration up here. Um, these are big things. That picture way up at the top there is a cabin on a lake. I would love to have a cabin on the lake. Any lake, I don't care. Um, but whatever it happens to be. So take a few minutes, or take a minute or two, and just, just write. Just whatever comes in. It can be little, it could be, it could be big or it could be little too. It could be um, something small. It's always interesting to see what people come up with and what they like. I put a picture of a really big mansion on there and like I'm thinking I don't want to clean that house. <laughs> right, did, you come, did you come up with a little list? Yes. All right. So you can go to the next slide. Now I want you to pick one. Just pick one thing. You can put an X or a star or underline it or something, but just pick one thing. You go ahead next. Awesome. Now think about what is stopping you. What are those barriers? And then if you want to yell something out, you can. Kids. Time. Money. All right. Tired. Tired. Awesome. <laughs> Wonderful. Tired. So I'm not, I don't read minds, but I know two of them you just said. So we'll go to the next slide. Time. Yes, thanks, Sam. Um, so time, and I am so guilty of this too, if somebody is um, you know, saying, hey, can you help me with this or can you do this, the first thing I wanna say is I don't have time. Um, but if you kind of turn it in your head and say, I'm not making, or I need to make time, or do I need to make time? Kind of, if you can kind of change your brain to kind of think about that. Um, but I thought we'd also, we'd talk about a few ways to kind of think differently about your time. Now, I have a planner. I'm a paper planner person. Right now, my planner is over there holding the projector up, but I love to, um, I have to write everything out. Um, this is the planner, this is called a soul planner, if anyone's interested, but this is my fourth one, and this is the first planner I've ever used for four years in a row. Usually, I use them for a few months and I forget, um, but this is awesome. But So whatever, you, whatever works for you, kind of find that. Um, maybe you're a digital person and you like to have everything on your phone or your computer, awesome. You, you do you, that's awesome. I just have to write everything out. Then I can see what my week is going to look like. Um, and if you don't have a planner, if you've never used one before, even if you do, take a few days and write down everything that you do in that day. And kind of look, are there times that you're, maybe could be used differently? Um, you know, are you spending more time on one thing that really isn't helping you or making you feel good or being productive. If you kind of sit down and actually write out or put it into your phone what you're doing, kind of look back and see if there's any patterns there that you can um, find. Um, and then at the bottom there, I have a picture of someone with a phone. And I don't know about you guys, but I have been very addicted to that phone at times. I'm doing much better because I don't want to be stuck on my phone. But I'm just going to check one thing on Facebook, you know? Oh, I posted a picture of my dog. I want to see how many people liked it five minutes later. Come on. Um, but So I've had to make a um, conscious decision to put my phone away. So if you have your phone next to you, do you need to have it next to you? Um, if you work from home, you know, put your phone in the other room. Um, what else was I going to say about that? Yeah, just get it away from you. Put the, shut it off. Turn the sound off. Don't let it be a distraction for you. I bet you will save a lot of time doing that. And then I put a picture of a pretty sunrise that I caught the other day, a couple weeks ago. Um, maybe you get up 15 minutes earlier than you normally do. You can get, even just starting that 15 minutes, maybe you meditate, maybe you do a journal, maybe you just read a book for 15 minutes. Anything to kind of get your day started, um, that 15 minutes can, can, sometimes it'll turn into half an hour, an hour. You can get a lot of work done. Um, I, my kids, I, as I said, are long gone, but maybe you have kids and you need a little time before they get up and you have to get the day started. Grab that 15 minutes to start with and um, just to add a little bit more time to you. 
All right, so time. Next one I heard. Oh, oh did I go? Nope, it did. It is now. Yeah. Money. Yes, Nathan came up with that. Totally. So there's a lot of ways that you can save money, and there's other ways, and there's ways that you can get more money. So um, to save money, this, I am a super saver. Like, I'm, a, okay, I'm a cheapskate. I'll just put it that way. Um, but there's a lot of ways to save money if you really try. Um, how many of you go to Starbucks or Caribou or Dunn Brothers? Yeah. If you go like twice a week, those, those coffee drinks are what, five bucks at least? I, I know that they're more now. Um, maybe take that money and put it into your piggy bank or, you know, I can, I do digital banking on my phone so I can just transfer money over from one account to the other. Take that five dollars, don't go to Starbucks, switch the money over to your savings account um, and that'll add up. I mean, if you do two coffees a week times 52 weeks, that's ten dollars a week, five hundred and twenty dollars um, that you can save. Um, you know, make your coffee at home or, you know, save it, maybe do once a month or something. So just, just a little example. Um, you know, bag lunches, you don't, how often do you go out to eat? Um, as my husband is retired, like I said, it's, we get kind of tired of cooking and it's really easy to go out or go to the drive-thru or whatever, but it's so expensive. It's so, I mean, it, it just is. And so you can save a lot of money by making your own meals at home or, you know, if you work out of your home, take your own lunch to work, that kind of thing. And then there's also programs, I know like credit cards will have cash back, so that's ways you can save money. Um, I know there's like savings where you, when you use your debit card, it'll round up and you can save that money that way, that's kind of cool. Um, another thing that we did a few years ago is we looked at our insurance, and long story short, we ended up saving like $1,000 a year by, just by switching our insurance over. Um, so look Not at those anymore. things. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> that was a few years ago, like I said. But there's always ways that you can um, look at what you're spending and see if you can cut back. Secret there we go, right there. Um, yeah, I mean, look at those things. Like right now, I'm look, we're looking at our, you know, our internet streaming. You know, we have to watch the Brewers games, and so we do one. Only one service has it, so now I'm going to be canceling that and going to the other one. I mean, but we really, it's, if you don't need to those, get rid of them. That kind of thing. All right, and then making more money. You can always um, find a little J-O-B, a little part-time job if you have the time or <laughs> make the time. Um, you know, just a fun job, call it a fun job. I did one last year, it was kind of fun, just, it was for fun. Um, but there's no shortage of little jobs that you could do if you have that extra time on your hands. Um, there's also other ways if you don't want to do that kind of thing. Um, it, I had a, a podcast guest, and I know I wrote it on there, but um, her name was Sarah Davenport. It's episode 130 if you're interested. Um, but she is a, um, she was a television journalist who had enough. She was wanting to spend more time with her family. And in this episode, she talks a lot about uh, revenue streams and different ways to have money coming in. Are you an expert on something? Do you know something about a certain topic? Can you write an ebook? Put that out. Um, if, do you love a certain product, a direct sales product? There's a lot of direct sales companies where you don't have to start your own, you know, big business. You can just kind of do it on the side. So that's a little income that comes in as well. Um, lots of different ways. I'm going to be doing some uh, e-courses, online courses about aromatherapy. Um, so there's always ways that you can kind of, if you're creative and you're willing to work a little bit, there are ways to make some money. Um, to kind of help with whatever your, your big goal is. All right, the third one, I don't think anyone said it, but you can go ahead, and this is probably the hardest one, and this is you, your mindset, your brain. As you were writing, were, you, were any of you thinking, I can't do that, or I don't think I can do that? Your brain has a really, um, a really strong hold on you, basically. Your brain's always running, and whatever you um, see or hear or say or think, it takes that in. So we want to make sure that we're talk we're saying positive things, um, and because that's what you want your brain to hear. Like I said, when I when we were talking about time earlier, if we're talking about um, you know I don't have time, turn it around. I need to make time for this, or should I make time for this? Um, I actually have, and then you, I don't know if you'll be able to do this, but I do have a guide on my website um, called Three Easy Ways to Change Your Mindset. And if you want to go to the next slide, um, I talk about 
three ways that you can change your mindset. Um, we can leave that up too if you guys want to. Um, but just ways to kind of um, kind of block those thoughts. I actually, um, when I, I think of it as like a tennis racket, like if I get a negative thought that comes in, I've learned to just kind of bat it away with that tennis racket. And that's just a visual for me that I can use to, um, to kind of help with that. So anyway, if you want to grab that from my website, um, that would be awesome. I'm not sure where we are on time. Okay, perfect. All right. Um, so yeah, so basically feed your brain positive thoughts, positive messages. And I have the attitude, if someone tells me I can't do something, I'll say, why not? Or watch me, I'm going to. Um, so I, it served me well, especially at this age. You kind of have that, those filters kind of go away, and you don't really, you're just like, yeah, here I am, you know, deal with it. Um, which is very liberating, by the way. Um, so before we say goodbye, I just wanted to read a quick quote um, that I actually found it this morning, so it's not on my, my slides, but it was very appropriate. Um, it says, success is not the key to happiness. Happiness is the key to success. If you love what you are doing, you will be successful. And that was Albert Schweitzer. Um, so if you wanna go to the next slide. So yes, so I wanna thank you for having me here today. I hope some of this was helpful. And if you wanna find me, just put in Midlife with Courage, you'll find me anywhere. Um, I'm on Instagram, Facebook. Um, my website is midlifewithcourage.com. I do not do TikTok or anything like that, but yet, maybe, I don't know, we'll see. So yeah, so thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah.